Come, sir. Thank you so much, Pastor. Everybody, praise the Lord. That's good. I was waiting for a hoda. Hallelujah. Today, somebody shout today. One by one. You there. Are you there? Even though we are many, God touches our lives one by one. Grace for you today. Healing for you today. Salvation for you today. And the power of God will reach you where you are in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we well, thank you and bless your name. Great God, marvelous God, gracious God. Lord, we pray that today none will miss their miracle in Jesus' name. Salvation, healing, deliverance, solution to every problem. Grant everyone tonight in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, speak in the language everyone understands. That they will know that you are the redeemer, savior, healer, deliverer for everyone. And confirm your word in everyone's life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're looking at another aspect of grace in our lives. Grace. Grace is manifold, many-sided, and grace reaches you at the point of need. You need eternal life, grace available. You need salvation, grace available. You need healing. It needs to touch your body. It needs to heal you. Grace available. Any problem in your life and you want that problem to be rolled away, grace is available today. And I'm talking to you tonight on the marvelous grace of a loving Lord. He is Lord Lord over the earth, Lord over people, all his people, and Lord over every situation in life. And it's a loving, caring God. He loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever that's you there, whosoever that's him there, whosoever will believe you'll have everlasting life. You want life? I said you want life? You want everlasting life? It comes today to manifest His marvelous grace that grants you everlasting life. And as we look at the marvelous grace of our Lord tonight, we're looking at Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. The word we hear, the preaching we hear, the gospel that we hear is the word of his grace. Now it tells us something. It says that word of his grace, which is able to build you up. He lays the foundation of your life. He builds you up. He raises you up. He takes everything away from your life that will not profit your life or benefit your life. And he is the only one that can do that. It says is to build you up and then to give you an inheritance 
something you didn't have before, something you have never known, coming from heaven, coming from the hand of the Almighty God, and He says He will give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. The words of His grace that will work, that will work the wonder by his grace. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and I'm reading here from verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 and God is able. God is able. I said God is able for you there whatever load you carry whatever problem harasses your life whatever situation you find yourself god is able helpless god is able lonely god is able and you are totally shattered in life god is able you are sick whatever the name of the sickness our god is able, able to make all grace abound toward you. To make all grace, the many-sided grace of God, the manifold grace of God, and the various things grace is supposed to do in your life, our God is able to make all that grace abound toward you. That ye always have it morning afternoon night always having you go home you come back here always having all sufficiency in all things it grants us all sufficiency in all things that ye may abound to every good work as we look at that verse and you think of the grace of god so deep so high, so broad, extensive in your life to cover every challenge you have in life. You come tonight with the understanding that my God is able. He's able to solve your problem. Let me hear you. He's able to save your soul. He's able to heal your body. Is able to take all that torment of the devil, harassment of the devil, and the attacks of enemy. Is he able to take it away from your life? Why can't I hear you here? He will do it. The marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Three things we're talking about. Number one, is the great God's grace that pardons and cleanses within. He pardons the past, then he cleanses you at the present time so that you will go on now in life with a clean life, a clean slate. God's marvelous grace that pardons and cleanses within. Look at number two here. Number two is the great multiplied grace that purges to create souls whiter. You see, when grace comes to us, it doesn't just pardon us, it cleanses us. When grace comes, it doesn't just purge, it also creates your soul that will become whiter. Look at number three. Number three is the greater much less grace that prepares and conforms saints to be worthy. He prepares us so that we can be worthy for that glorious home, glorious palace, glorious place, paradise of the Lord. He prepares us and he conforms us as saints of God to be worthy to get to that final place. That's why you are here. It'll prepare you. I said it'll prepare you. 
Look at number one now. Number one is God's marvelous grace that pardons and cleanses within. Look at the word of God, Micah chapter 7. I read here from verse 18. Micah chapter 7. We're reading from verse 18. It says, Who is a God like unto thee? God has no comparison. Who is, a, who is like a God like unto thee? Christ has no comparison. Who is a God like unto thee? The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit has no comparison. Who is a God like unto thee? That partners iniquity, that forgives transgression, that blots out all the bad things, all the evil things we have done. That's something an angel cannot do. That's something no man on earth, whether in the past, in the present, or the future, no man can do that. Only God can do this, that he pardons iniquity and he passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. And then we're told that he retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He delighteth mercy. That's still grace of God. Mercy. That's the love of God. Mercy. That is the compassion of the Lord. He brings us to a point that all the sins of the past, all the evil of the past, all the bad things you've done in the past, there's no God like unto him that pardons all iniquity. And tonight, all your iniquity, it will pardon. All your sin, it will take away. Then in verse 19, he tells us in verse 19, he says, He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. Upon who? I said he will have compassion upon who? He will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. That's the sea of God's forgetfulness. When he forgives you, he also forgets. He doesn't count it against you anymore. That is the marvelous grace that forgives and cleanses us within. And look at, at Isaiah chapter 55. Here we're looking at verse 6. What he does. How he does it. When he does it, for whom he does it. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 55, reading from verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Seek ye the Lord on such a day like this, a day of opportunity when he comes to you. And he promises that if you come today, if you turn today, if you repent today, today because you're not sure tomorrow, you're not sure when the last breath will get out of you and then you become just body without the spirit. Today, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. He's near at this time to pardon. At this time to forgive. At this time to show his love and his mercy unto you. Call upon him while he's near. How do you call upon him? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way. You see that God forgives. God pardons. God takes the remembrance of your past sins away. 
bunch. It says you must forsake all those things of the past. It says you must call upon him. And it says you must turn around and repent and not continue in doing the same old bad thing you have been doing. Then it says let your righteous forsake his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy. You come to the Lord. He will have mercy upon you. I said he will have mercy upon you. You stop the bad errand you've been going after. You stop the bad way you've been following. You stop the bad habits, the evil habits, the sinful things you have been doing. And then you turn. You follow the Lord. Mercy will meet you as you come. And he will have mercy upon him and unto our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's great. That he wasn't happy with what you've done. God is angry with the wicked every day. Why? Because he's angry at the wickedness, at the sin, at the evil. But you make up your mind, I've heard. My life has not been pleasing to God. My life has not given God the joy of sending his only begotten son to die for me. And as you realize that you're sorrowful, that you've gone on an evil way for so long. And now you turn and you say, Lord, I plead, I pray, I beg, forgive me. He will forgive you. Yes. I said he will forgive you. But he does not expect that you go back to those same things that made him angry and that made him want to put the judgment upon you. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 25. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. It says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Now, when, when we talk in our normal language, uh, we don't start a conversation with then. We go on in the conversation. We we'll say, this happens, that happens, that happens. We say then, which means after that. He says then. He had said something before. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him. He says then. He says, let the wicked forsake his way, then, and let him return unto our God. Then, he's telling you, you do that part, which is the human part. You can repent, that's why I told you to repent. You can turn, that's why I told you to turn. Then he said, then, will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. Tonight, you'll be clean. Then he says, and from all your filthiness, and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. Give me a good amen. Yeah. Uh, there are people that think, yes, God is merciful, God is great, and uh, God is gracious. And so they just come. They are holding their idol very close to them. They want to serve. The great God above, and they want to honor the little God of wood, of stone. They want to honor the little God in their shrine. They want to honor the little idol in their house. You cannot do both together. You cannot serve God and idols. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the evil things you've been holding on to before. He says, when you confess and you forsake, he says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. Clean tonight. Clean tonight. When he forgives you and he sets you free and he turns your life around and you become a new creation of God. No idols anymore. 
Somebody shout, shout yes. yes. I said no idols anymore. Yes. No shrine anymore. If you have something you are hanging by your waist, you remove it, you throw it away. In fact, if we had chance, I would say that all those, all those idols and those charms and those waistbands and those uh, handbands, whatever, you all come here, we we'll drop them here and we'll make a bonfire of them. I said we'll make a bonfire out of them. You can, when you get back home, when you give yourself to the Lord and all the idols that he says he cleanse you from you will gather everything together and burn everything now you are for the Lord and the Lord alone and the Lord will be for you and he will bless your life in Jesus name we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37 and I'm reading from verse 23 Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 23 it says Neither shall they defile themselves anymore. You see, when you come to the Lord and you confess all the defilement you had in the past, boy defiler. They call them boyfriend. No, it's boy defiler. Girl defilement. And they say, girlfriend. No, not friend. Someone is going to drag you to hell. That's not a friend. It's the defiler that comes to defile your life. It's your bosom, Delilah. That wants to defile your life. Take away your sight. Take away your sense. Take away the spirit. Take away everything valuable in your life. But you come to the Lord and He says, the oil that your defilement that has defiled your life tonight, today, you are delivered in Jesus' name. All the idols that defiled your life, you jettison them, you, you throw them away, you say no more. And then the Lord says, It will cleanse you. He says he will change you. He said that things will be totally different in your life. He says all those idols not with their uh, with their detestable all things, all the things that God detests, all the things that God says, I don't want this, I don't want this in your life. You listen to the Lord. You don't just you don't just say, I come to the presence of God, God, I come to worship God. You listen to what He says, and when you obey what He says, it is only then you belong to the Lord. Tonight, I belong to the Lord. I, I belong to the Lord. And then he says, I will save them out of their, uh, all, out of all the things that defiled them. He says, I deliver them wherein they have sinned against him and I will cleanse them. Look at that word again. That's what God is interested in. He's not interested in, I praise, to, I, pray the, I praise the Lord, I follow the Lord, I do this, I do that. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to change your life. All those things your life that you are doing in the private that makes God unhappy that he created you. And yet, you are not honoring him. And yet, you are not following him. He says, get rid of all those things. And he will be your God. You will be his son. You will be his daughter in Jesus' name. Did I hear a good amen there? In First John chapter 1, reading from verse 9. First John chapter 1, reading from verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, if you confess your sin, eh, there are Pharisees, there are Sadducees. Who are they? They are the people that confess other people's sins. They don't confess their own sin. Oh, they say, our forefathers have sinned. My father sinned. My mother sinned. Our village people 
the sin that's why all this is coming upon my life he says no you don't be a pharisee don't be a sadducee confess your own sin if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness any amen on my side there yeah. uh, can i tell you something satan also quotes the bible satan can quote the bible for you you may not see satan directly a messenger of satan can quote the bible for you a follower of satan can coach the Bible. You remember when Satan tempted Jesus after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights? Satan came and he quoted the Bible for him. He said, Throw yourself down because it is written. Then he quoted the Bible and he removed one word, changed one word. And the changing of that word. Make sure to go astray. If you follow that, look at this verse. Look at how Satan quotes this verse. And look at how the messengers of Satan, the preachers for Satan, quotes this word. You know, say, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Ah, you want to pay attention because this uh, person quoting the Bible is quoting it right. He's saying, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to condone all our sins and we live in our righteousness. For, for, uh, confess and he condones. He condones. There are people that say so. Hey, God is so kind and the grace of God is so great. Just confess. He forgives you. Then whatever you do after that, he condones. The Bible does not say that. You confess. You forsake. And then he forgives us. And he cleanses us. There's a difference there. Not that, well, he has forgiven me. And now I have grace. I have the liberty. Go on sinning. Go on sinning. Go on sinning. You are a child of God. God condones your sin. No, he does not. He didn't condone the sins of Judas Iscariot after he kept on following the Lord he condemned the sin he didn't, con he didn't condone the sin of Ananiah and Sapphira he condemns that and Demas as you know forsaking me God did not uh, condone that he does not condone our sin after he has forgiven us he says go and sin no more Grace will come to your life. I said grace will come to your life. He forgives you and he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And tonight, you come sincerely before the Lord. You call sincerely upon the Lord. He forgives you and he cleanses you. That's the promise all over the Bible. In the Old Testament and New Testament, he cleanses our sins. And when he cleanses our sins, all those sins will not remain again in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the great multiplied grace that purges and uh, creates souls whiter he makes us whiter in the blood of the lamb he cleanses us he washes us he purges us so that on the inside we don't even have desire to go after those things anymore he watches and creates and makes our souls whiter than snow and because he makes them whiter than snow there's no desire to do those bad evil licentious evil things sinful things because here is multiplied grace the grace that pardons the grace that purges and the grace that makes us whiter 
than snow. It will do it in our lives. I said it will do it in our lives. And accomplish it in all our lives in Jesus' name. And we're looking at it, see what God does and see why He does it. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. He says, Can an Ethiopian change his skin? No, he cannot. That's the implication there. That's a leopard. An Ethiopian. They cannot change their stripes. They cannot change all the things that have been upon them from birth. By nature, men and women, boys and girls, are sinners by birth. By sinners, by, they are sinners by nature. They are sinners by practice. They are sinners by habit. Can then the utopian change his skin. Can the leopard change the stripes that he has on the body? No, they cannot. If they cannot, the sinner cannot change himself. That's why we need purging. That's why we need the miracle working power of the grace of God that will totally, completely take away all the things that we have heard in our lives and this marvelous grace we're talking about it talks about sin and despair like the sea waves cold it says they threaten the soul with a finite loss but grace untold grace so great that is the grace that we go to the refuge now we enter into that refuge and our sins are bought what we couldn't do for ourselves he now does for us that's why he says we're not look to the mighty cross the mighty cross of the lord jesus christ there all those things all those tribes all the nature and all the habits, everything is totally broken. It says, dark is the stain we cannot hide. That is, all the things that have been in our lives. All the terrible, terrible things we have done. That we are born with. The depravity of man. We cannot cleanse ourselves from them. It says, dark is the stain that we cannot hide the question is what then and who then can take them away it says look the race flowing the crimson tide and whiter than snow you may be today that's what he does for us that now he cleanses he changes and everything becomes totally different the lord can do it by his grace He'll do it in your life today. I said he'll do it in your life today. That all those things the leopard cannot change. All those things the Ethiopian cannot change. All those things that the sinner cannot change. A change will come in your life. And we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. It says, Don't you know? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't you know? You don't enter the kingdom of God by the position you hold in the church. You don't enter the kingdom of God by the community in which you live. You don't enter the kingdom of God by all the activities, the uh, self-righteous activities. You are righteous within, in your thoughts, in your heart, in your life in your character in your lifestyle don't you know that all those things you're doing once you are internally unrighteous will make you to miss the kingdom of god i pray you'll get to the kingdom of god everyone here you there you here everywhere you'll get to the kingdom of god that is the one place 
you must not miss I will not miss the kingdom of God mm, not everybody is talking you see when we when we get to the you know football field some are players others are spectators I will not be a spectator so you want to get to the kingdom of God here is what the Lord is telling us and he says know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived neither tell me fornicators watch nor idolaters idol worship of any kind no adulterers those who leave their husbands and they go to people who are not their husband and what they are allowed to do only with their husband they deal with other men those are adulterers they may go to church they may come to crusade they may do any religious thing they belong to that and belong to that adulterers will not get to the kingdom of God then it says neither the effeminate effeminate the people who are boys and they want to look like a girl they even want to go and do some operations so that they will feel like a girl and talk like a girl and, and their body anatomy will look like that of a girl effeminate and the men who join what men to do what only the man and his wife can do the woman who goes to another woman to do something that only wife and husband should do those are the people and it says neither the effeminate it says no the abusers of themselves with mankind they will not inherit the kingdom of god that's what the book of god says then in verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us no thieves there are you know private thieves they, they, they pilfer they take little little things that they spend on in one day or one week there are other professional thieves whether they are private thieves or professional thieves they don't get to the kingdom of god no the covetous no the drunkards drunkards yes no revilers no the extortioners they will not inherit the kingdom of god and i've told you so you cannot blame me what you do is so that you repent your turn you say i must get to the kingdom of god amen yeah. i will get to the kingdom of god how do i get there i need the grace of god to purge me you need the grace of god to purge you and to create in you a clean heart that will become whiter than snow look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says and such were some of you he said you are like that and maybe you are still like that there tonight a change will come in your life in jesus name he says but you are washed that's the secret washed 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 it's when you are washed all the record in the book of god in heaven that that's an adulterer that's a fornicator that's an idolater that's a thief that is uh, an effeminate person all those records about you when you are washed everything will be cleared away you see you are washed and ye are sanctified now the lord after he washes you he sets you apart and he says you are not like those ones anymore you will he sets you apart and he says you will not perish anymore he sets you apart and it says yes i know you you have confessed you have forsaken i have washed you i have cleansed you i have pardoned you i have purged you i pray if you have not got it you get it tonight 
and then he goes on to say he had justified justified god then looks at you because he had forgiven the sins of the past he looks at you now as if you have never sinned he so forgives and he so forgets and he justified you meaning you are justified and acquitted you are set free and you are treated just as if you had never sinned and then he says it was done in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god tonight i said tonight that's what he will do in your life. If you let him do it, you let him pardon you, you let him purge you, you let him turn your life around, transform your life. Tonight, grace untold, mercy untold will come in your life and turn everything around for the better in Jesus' name. I say, chapter 1. Reading from verse 16, Isaiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 16. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16, it says, Wash you. The blood of Jesus is there. Wash you. The fountain of the blood of the Lamb that was shed for you is there. It's available. And it is still fresh today as when Christ. Uh, was slain and his blood was shed on the cross of Calvary and today you can come and wash you and then make you clean those are the people that follow the Lord I don't know about all these uh, you know church goers religious people they go to church they go to church and they're still as dirty as before as before they came to church I don't know about all these uh, people who say that children people of God people of God and they're still as dirty as if they ever they never heard the word and the name of the Lord wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doing from before me put away when you put something away that thing is no more there and so as you look at your life and as you look at all your actions, your behavior, your character, all the evil you have been doing since you knew left from right, all those things are still there. It says if you are going to follow the Lord, here comes your responsibility. Put away the evil of your doing from before me. And then it's from before my eyes and cease to do evil give me a good amen yeah. after this um, tonight's message and the lord forgives you and the lord sets you free the lord pardons you and the lord purges you then all those things are put away i said all those things are put away your mind your heart is now set on entering the kingdom of God. And look at the next verse, verse 17 there. It says, learn to do well. That, that's why after you have given your life to the Lord, we we'll say, come meet us the following day at 3 o'clock so that we can show you now, you learn, you learn, you learn, you become a disciple. A disciple is a learner. A disciple is a listener. You are listening to the words of the Lord. You are no more ignorant. You know, this is the way walk ye therein. You learn. You cease to do evil. You learn to do well. You seek justice. And you relieve the oppressed. And you judge the fatherless. And you plead for the widow look at verse 18 then he says come now come now in those days when a king invited somebody the person will feel so honored he will change his clothes 
uh, change his appearance and uh, get out of the rotten things they have been doing to appear before the king. Pharaoh called Joseph. He was in the prison. He said, go call the young man. And he said, Joseph, in the prison, the king is calling you. He changed his garment. He put off, this one should not see the king. The king should not see this one. And he removed the garment of imprisonment. And now he came to the king. If you're coming to the king of kings, and you're coming to the lord of lords, come now and let us reason together, says the lord. You put up. You put away all those evil things. And then it says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And it says, though they be like crimson, they shall be as wool. He'll do it in your life. I said he'll do it in your life. In Psalm 51, reading from verse 5. Psalm 51, we're looking at verse 5. Here David, a king, we appreciate the highly placed who are here. And we appreciate the highly placed who are everywhere connected with this global crusade. Yet, we need to understand as a king, as a leader, as a professional person, even as leaders in the church, this needs to be understood very well. Here, David the king was saying, Behold, I was shapen in equity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. If the king said that, all the subjects should know that in the same situation with them. If the high, the highest, says that in any nation, in any community, the subjects, those who are lower than the highest, they should understand, is the same situation. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Behold, thou desirest truth, in the inward, in the inward parts, in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our inner man, inner life, in our thought life, God desires the truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. What's wisdom? Wisdom is to look ahead and to so live and to so act in a way that you get to that destination up above. And when you have wisdom, you look at your life, how you live, what you do. You look at God's judgment, God's word on what your life is, and you say, Hmm. I don't want to die in this condition. I want to be wise. And then your life is cleansed. Your heart is cleansed. Your past is forgiven. And you're given the grace to not move ahead so that with that wisdom, you'll get to the kingdom of God. I will be wise. I will be wise. I will be wise. Look at verse 7. Look at what the Lord will do now. He says, Purge me personal. You must tell the Lord, you know how your heart is, you know your lifestyle, you know your character. You know that although you say you are following Christ, you're not living as Christ wants his followers. A disciples to leave. You're not conscious of the presence of God, of the purging of Christ in your life, and of the pardon that the Lord has given. Now, you're telling the Lord, wash me, purge me 
with Aesop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter. Look at that. I shall be whiter than snow. If you are piling up your old life, if you are piling up everything you've been doing before that made you dirty, you will not be even as white as snow, not to talk of whiter than snow. He'll make you whiter than snow. He'll make me whiter than snow. He'll do it in our lives in Jesus' name. Because if we remain as dirty as we were, the coming of Christ will not have profited us. Our coming here will not have profited us, but the prophet comes as he purges you and cleanses you and makes you whiter than snow. Will you allow him to purge you tonight? I said, will you allow him to purge you tonight? He'll purge sin away from your life. He'll purge sickness away from your life. He'll purge afflictions and attacks away from your life. He will do something that people that see you, you know, if something had been gray or black, and all of a sudden you find that same garment. No more black, no more gray, but pure white. Now, even whiter than snow, it will attract attention. People will say, ah, wasn't this, it's not this, the clothes I used to see, black or gray. You say, what happened? Heaven brought transfiguration. I said, heaven brought transfiguration. He'll do it in our lives in Jesus' name. Number three now, number three, we're looking at greater, matchless grace that prepares and conforms the saints to be worthy. The grace of God, that's what it does. Marvelous, that grace, infinite, that grace, matchless, that grace that is freely bestowed upon us. And that matchless, infinite grace bestowed freely upon us that is what makes us whiter than snow and makes us worthy and it says if you are the person that you're looking to see his face eventually won't you come now and won't you tell him i need this grace i receive this grace 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 God's grace, the grace that is greater than all our sins that will cleanse us within. You'll do that in your life in Jesus' name. It's all of grace. Salvation, all of grace. Healing, all, is all of grace. Deliverance, all of grace. Dominion over everything that touched our lives, that stained our lives in the past, that grace comes. And if grace is there, the evidence will be there, the outcome will be there, the goodness of the Lord will be there, and people that know you will know this person now has the grace of God. You will have. I will have. What does grace do? Grace makes us to be conformed unto the Lord. And when it comes to your life tonight, takes hold of your life tonight, it will make you conformed unto the very Son of God. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 29. The purpose of God what he does, why he does what he does. He says, for whom he did for no, them also. He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. He makes to be conformed to the image 
of his son to the life of his son when you come to the lord and grace comes to you he looks at christ and looks at you he cleanses and purges and purifies you until you become conformed unto the image of his son look at the next verse there in romans chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 2 romans chapter 12 we're looking at verse 2 he says and be not conformed to this world the world is dirty be not conformed unto this world the world is harmful do not be conformed to this world the world is upside down not the right side up do not be conformed to this world the world is submissive to the devil to satan be not conformed to this world the world is self-centered all they want is what i want all they want is what i want to do all they want is whatever gives pleasure to my flesh and when you're born again when you come to the lord and he takes your life over and he's preparing you to be conformed to the son of god and to be worthy it says now you come to the lord and you know the lord and the grace of god has come upon your life be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed that's what grace does that's what grace does don't allow anybody to tell you that you know when you have the grace of god you are forgiven if they say you're forgiven for the sins you have committed they say you're forgiven for the sins you have not committed but maybe you'll commit it now and the sins you are going to commit in life they say you're forgiven ah, that's like the government telling a prisoner now we you came to this prison because here is what you have done you are now having a royal pardon and then they tell him you have royal pardon now you are a murderer you have royal pardon you are you know the wayside roadside uh, dangerous person now you are pardoned and you have pardon for the past you are pardoned for the for the present you are pardoned for whatever you do out of when you get out of that prison every person will condemn such a government how can the government of heaven the government of the holy god the government of the righteous god the government that commands he wants to change and conformity to christ in our life how can he tell you i give you grace for the past and for the present and then for the future a doctrine coming from the pit of hell it says when you are pardoned it says when you're forgiven it says when you have the grace of god in your life be not conformed to this world it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good an acceptable and the perfect will of god somebody say amen. amen in hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 28 hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 28 wherefore where there wherefore we receiving a kingdom that's why we're here receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace look at that let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear does you feel they can have grace and have license to continue in sin they don't fear god the only do what they want to do the flesh is so strong and the habit is so strong they don't even want to be free from them they, they want grace they want grace they want grace in their lives 
but grace as license to do evil. It says, let us have grace that we may serve God with reverence and with godly fear. And I pray that grace will come to our lives in Jesus' name. And we're looking at First Peter chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his mercy abundant mercy abundant grace has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead he was slain he was crucified for us he rose again for justification and now he lives in us he says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone any man any woman any person hears my voice and opens the door i will come in unto him i will sup with him i'll fellowship with him as you open your heart to the lord tonight the lord with abundant grace and mercy will come to your life in jesus name and the lord with the grace that pardons the grace that purges, the grace that prepares you to be conformed to the Son of the living God so that you'll be worthy on that final day. He'll give you that grace in Jesus' name. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 4. It says, Thou hast a few names even in service which have not defiled their garments after they have been washed in the blood of the lamb after they have been cleansed in the blood of the lamb they didn't go back to the old lifestyle they didn't go back to the old habit they didn't go back the grace of god so manifested in their lives that they didn't go to soil their garments anymore and I pray this transforming grace will take effect in your life tonight in Jesus' name. You see, because they have not defiled their garments and uh, they shall walk with me. That's Christ talking. You will be with Christ. You will walk with Christ. And you will live where Christ is forever and ever in Jesus' name. He says, they will walk with him in white, for they are worthy. God will make you worthy. I say God will make you worthy. To be worthy, we'll drop all things that God hates, we'll drop them down. To be worthy, we'll turn away from all the evils that we have done. To be worthy, we'll make him our God and he alone to be worthy will make him our savior and him alone to be worthy we give our heart our life to him he washes us he cleanses us he makes us as white as snow he makes us whiter than snow and he makes us worthy to inherit that kingdom that shall never be moved and as you give your life to the Lord tonight, He'll make you worthy. I said, He'll make you worthy. Remember the prodigal son? He came and He said, I am no more worthy. But He came. He was humble. He led that far country. He led all the husks of the pigs that He was, uh, you know, hustling for there and when he left everything and came back home and he said i am not worthy the father made him worthy now you are not worthy but the god of heaven will make you worthy the grace of god will make you worthy the goodness of god will make you worthy the pardon the purging the preparing of your heart and life before the Lord will make you worthy.
Amen. Yeah. Who wants to become worthy to get over there? That God will say, come on in. I see your name in the book of life. Come on in. I see the day, the time I purged you. I pardoned you. And I give you that garment of righteousness. And you'll be wearing that garment of righteousness. Everywhere you go, you're recognized. Here is a pardoned person. Here is a purged person. Here is a prepared person. And the Lord will recognize you today, every day. He recognizes you on that final day. Where are you? It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. God is looking for people who are sincere, who come to Him in all sincerity. They're not just doing a religious crusade, they're not just here. I was there, I was there. They're the people that bring their hearts before the Lord. And I say, Lord, sincerely, wholeheartedly, with all my heart, with a great decision, I come. I need your pardon. I need your purging. I need your preparation that will prepare me for that glorious day. It's bowed and eyes closed. I want to have this grace of God, this salvation of God, whoever you are, young, old, man, woman, raise up your hand where you are. You didn't come here to be a spectator. You didn't come here just to clap your hand. You didn't come here just to fulfill a religious desire. You want real salvation. The salvation that pardons us, a past sin, that purges us from uh, that dead and defilement of sin. The salvation that prepares us for the coming kingdom. Raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you online. Or you're over the radio, you're watching by television, wherever you are, raise up that hand. This is a great moment unforgettable in your life. If you're raising up your hand, God bless you, please stand up. You're raising up your hand, you're not ashamed to identify for the one who paid the price for your sin. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand, please stand up. I want the pardon. I want the purging. You look at your life. Don't say I'm um, this in the church, I'm this in religion, I'm this or that. That's not what's important now. To be pardoned, to be poured, to be prepared for the coming kingdom. Rise right, so up wherever you are. God bless you. Wonderful. Be sincere now and tell the Lord, O oh Lord. I confess I forsake my sin. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him, tell him. And now I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. All those dirty things, adultery, fornication, idol worship, covetousness, wanting this and wanting that, destroying people that I may have this give up all that and let the grace of God come into your life and make a definite change and tell him I want now to be so transformed to be so changed that I have conformity unto Christ my Savior and my Lord tell him and tell him that as you come to Christ now, you will not go back to the old vomit anymore. Tell him. I'm, I'm praying with you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know you're a merciful God. And you have marvelous grace, multiplied grace, much less grace for every one of us. I pray, Lord, in your grace, forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray in your grace, touch them. All those evil things, all those sins, 
all those works of the flesh purge everything away from every life in jesus name and i pray that you so purge and pardon them cleanse them that will prepare them eventually for the coming kingdom in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray another good order amen keep on standing our counselors are there they'll take the details from you so that we can do a proper follow-up you become a steadfast disciple of christ we'll call on our officiating pastor tonight to lead us in the time of counseling Congratulations for a decision to accept the Lord as your Savior. To have the blessings of heaven, please stand up until you feel the forms and receive the package that is for you. If you can write and you have the writing material, you have a pen, you may feel the slip and hand it over to the counselors. But be diligent, supply your full name, write in capital letters so that it can be legible enough for people to read. Write your address. If your house does not have a street number, write the description of the place you reside. If it is a community without streets, write the name of the community and your compound name. Write your phone number clearly if you have one. If you don't have a phone and there is a number through which you can be contacted, you may also do well to write that number. That is a number that if we call, the person who receives the call can direct the person to you. You are now welcome to the kingdom of God. You've taken a great decision. Heaven is happy because of you. And tomorrow at 3 p.m. on this premises, in the space that is by the assembly hall where we have the minister's conference, we'll be having a lunch hour with you. Endeavor to be there. Those who give their lives to Christ on Thursday, on Friday, yesterday, Saturday, and today, please be there if you are part of those who gave their lives to christ in the days past and your details were taken on thursday or friday or yesterday you may not need to give your details a second time don't fail to be there tomorrow three PM.
After this time, people will come looking for you, to help you, to encourage you, to pray for you, to teach you the rudiments of the Christian life so that you can remain strong, grow in faith, grow in grace until you also become a preacher, an instrument in the hands of God. If a counselor has not come to meet you, please indicate. Don't sit down. It's a great blessing, very great blessing to belong to Christ. Counselors see to read that the names are legible. Somebody can read them clearly. And that the phone numbers have the complete digits. Congratulations once more. You've made the greatest decision the most blessed decision, the most rewardable decision, you will continue in the faith. You will not turn back. And the rest of the people have that assurance this very night all that heaven has for you, you will not miss any. Salvation is yours this night. Restoration is yours this night. Cleansing is yours this night. Healing of your body, that is yours because Christ paid for it. Deliverance from every oppression, that is what God has for you this night. Because of the presence of Christ in this place and the anointing upon the man of God, all of your desires shall be met. If you are watching online, and you have given your life to Christ. After the message this evening, there is a link that will show on your screen. gckhq.org slash connect. gckhq dot o r o g slash connect that is below your player click on it and then you will fill a form that we can use to assist you further in your work with Christ and if you are listening via radio or television and you've just given your life to Christ, do well to send your name, phone number, and your location, that is your address, through SMS or WhatsApp to plus 234-91-5242. Nine two six three. I take it again. Plus two three four. Ninety one fifty four. Forty four ninety two. Six three.
Remember the lunch hour with Jesus tomorrow? All of those who have given their lives to Christ, from Thursday till yesterday till today, be there. It's a blessed time you will spend in the presence of God. There will be special believers' banquets. A banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ during this crusade. That is going to be on 6th October. That is this coming Sunday in all of our churches globally. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be very delighted to have you join that special banquet. We appreciate you whilst you comply. Here at the Alpha location, that is in Ahoda here, the banquet this Sunday, coming Sunday, 6th October, will be holding at the venue will be telling you that is the church headquarters. The church headquarters here in Ahoda. Thank you. The church headquarters is at 63 Ubia Street, number 63 Ubia Street. It's not far away from this place. We'll be looking forward to meeting you there. After the miracle prayers this night, if you receive your miracle this night, because a lot of persons will be blessed even when you are listening online. We would like you, after receiving your miracles, to show gratitude to God by sending your testimonies to the WhatsApp number that is displayed on your screen during the time of the ministration. You, you can also record a video of your testimony, make a video clip of your testimony, and share it via WhatsApp or Telegram. We appreciate when you do that. Please cancel us. If you have finished canceling where you are, can you just indicate... If at the segment you are, you have finished canceling, do well to indicate. It's okay, try to hasten up. This is your night. Nothing will stand between you and your blessings. The things that you have desired for years, God has brought them within your reach. The man of God is here this night. When he opens his mouth, heaven honors it. Thousands will be delivered, healed, restored, sanctified, and granted breakthrough in various aspects of their lives, you will be one of them. Just pray in your heart. Tell the Lord, with all my heart, I believe that it is because of me you arranged this event. Lord, I know it's because of me 
you arranged this event. You sent your messenger. I will not miss what you have in store for me. Remember me in your mercy. He honors true faith wherever it is found. Tell him you believe. There is no reason whatsoever while you will be under a reign of miracles and be dying of thirsts. Diverse kinds of miracles God has done in diverse places. Counselors, please round up. Somebody there shout, Amen. Looks like your voice is gone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Tonight, the night of amazing grace. Marvelous grace. Matchless grace. Multiplied grace. Manifold grace. Healing will come to you by the grace of God. Deliverance by grace. Dominion by grace. In the name of Jesus that heals, delivers, casts out devil, and whatever we ask in that name, he will do it tonight. You are blind, you open your blind eyes. You are deaf, you are dumb, you lose everything you'll hear, you will speak. You are lame on the wheelchair. The grace of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God will lift you up. Whatever challenge in your life, the Lord is coming your way right now. And after you experience the miracle, you will check up yourself, you see it there, then you will come out. I will come. I will come. Already now, you lay your hand where you have the problem, you raise up the other hand. The name of Jesus is by you right there, the grace is by you right there. And the compassion of the Lord that heals the sick, that compassion is by you there. He's going to do it for you right now. Raise up the hand, then the other hand where you have the challenge. We're praying. Online, get ready. Over here, Alpha location, everyone, miracle. Father, in Jesus' name. Whatever we ask, according to your will, in that name, will be granted instantaneously. And here we come. We're asking for your creatures. We're asking for your people. We're asking for the men. We're asking for the women. We're asking for the boy. We're asking for the girl. Stretch out your healing hand. Heal them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, from the head 
to the heart, to the feet, whatever the problem. Grant them your miraculous solution right now in Jesus' name. Madness, insanity, all those demonic attacks, oppression, afflictions come out in Jesus' name. Swelling in your body, goiter, fibroid, hunchback, whatever swelling, elephantiasis, I command you be healed in Jesus' name. Heart problem. I pray, Lord, you touch them right now. Heal that heart in Jesus' name. Blood issue. Lord, I pray you touch them and heal that blood disease in Jesus' name. Brain. I pray you touch that brain. Set it right. And everything is all right in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have blind eyes, whatever the cause, I pray you touch the blind eyes and open those blind eyes now in Jesus' name. Deafness, dumbness, touch them miraculously. Take the dumbness away. Take the deafness away. Let there be definite, visible, manifested healing right now in jesus name and those who have pains all over the body i pray all those pains vanish away right now in jesus name with that hand they come strong feet limb paralyzed hooked because of pain I command, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, ulcer, cancer, hernia, asthma, whatever, receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. God of glory, King of glory, have glory on behalf of these people. Heal them for your own glory. Manifest your power for your own glory. Deliverance for your own glory. And let everyone receive of the grace, of the mercy, of the compassion, of the love that heals and delivers instantaneously right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Check up yourself. You see the manifestation of the miracle right there. You are blind, you can open your eyes and see. You are lame, you can rise up from that wheelchair, drop the coaches, and walk. Somebody there deaf, speak to them. Dumb, speak to them. And they will respond. You do what you couldn't do before because the manifestation is right there in your body. 